people say I'm on a roll today. I cannot say anything wrong. I can do no wrong today. But I've tried today hard. That's a goddamn lie. I did not try to find a job today. And I was going to sit here with a straight mind and say that. Because I've gotten flack from the things I've said. I've said some things that belittle myself today. I've said some things that people find to be completely outrageous and untrue. I've did three videos today that you will never see because they never uploaded. One video, as soon as I started talking, camera froze. So I continued to speak. And I talked bad about the situation. I know there was an audio tape of that. They could not process the video, but I know they could process the audio because I played at least four minutes of it back before I hit publish. The shit we go through as human beings every day is off the hook. And I had a talk with a friend today. I and mean, this dude was talking. And I was telling him, in a fucking perfect world, I would work at the power plant down the street. I'd go work at the grocery store a day a week. I'd go work at the farmers, you know, a couple of months a year. I'd go do whatever I had to do to make sure everybody in the village or town, whatever, would eat. And, you know, he's right outside right now. I think he's just sitting out there. And I'm telling him, dude, he's like, why well, would people's incentive to be to go to work? In the free world, a resource-based world, your incentive to go to work is to make sure you have the resources to survive. If nobody had to pay the rent, nobody had to pay for nothing, and the government provided everything, and you provided everything to the government that you could do for the government, all we'd have to do is need credits. And he says, what do you mean credits? I'm like, if I want a big-ass TV, I'm going to work at the TV store or the TV company giving away TVs or building TVs or making TVs. So I can get me a bigger TV than the one I can just walk in there and get for free. I could, you know, you could do incentives for all kind of shit. And this guy is telling me that this shit ain't going to work. I hate when morbid people tell me shit and I can't get rid of them. I like the guy, but why should you yell and shit and scream at somebody just because they don't have, have the same point of view or agree with you on something? Um, but... In my world, all we would work for is the necessities. That's the only reason you had to go to work. One new pair of jeans, then you got to work at the store that, that gives away those jeans. All right? You, you want to have electricity and a fancy fucking car. And of course, you got to work at the power plant at least one day a week. Or somebody from your household got to go work over there to make sure electricity is on for the whole fucking entire town. It's, it's like if we had a community-based thing where everybody did everything for everybody else and nobody had to pay for nothing, that would work. My incentive to go to work would be to get a bigger TV, to get a bigger house that you can pass on to your kid who can trade it or fix on it or whatever. Things can be done for people not to suffer. We got a society built on, I need more, give me more, give me more. People can build a faster machine, a faster computer and shit better farming equipment, but people still got to pay to eat. There's a the logic in that. And then I hit this project they got. Well, I was talking about this ever since I was a little kid. You get 500 computers in a room, and you each computer is a different part of the human body. And I would tell myself I'd attack this computer with different diseases, and in the computer I had everything known chemically, physically, or whatever on the planet Earth programmed in this computer and I tell this computer you are dying of this and let the computer solve the problem now they have a project doing that I think they've already had a project doing that way even before I thought about doing it and I'm 40 years old I thought about this when I was a little kid let's just build supercomputers to handle our problems but I'm some stupid uneducated 
quote next you want to nigger who doesn't give a fuck about life no more just raping white women and, and smoking weed and drinking beers and fucking hoes and slapping my bitch around and letting my niggas run through my shit we quit to allow a person to stereotype us or to put us in a label that does not fit us I'm not the average human being of the average person. I am me. I am a singular entity upon this world, and I'd rather live here in peace among the other inhabitants than to live looking over my back, wondering if someone wants to devour me or eat me. I also talked to a friend of mine, and I said, what would be the worst way to die? And I said, to be eaten alive. And he says, nah, people have said that. I said, to be eaten alive by human beings who are not sick, zombies. Just be eaten alive by your own people. And that was a metaphor for being completely destroyed by the people around you. That's the worst way to die, is to have everybody around you make you so negative that all you can think about is negative thoughts and to become a negative person based on the thoughts that are created by the words that you're listening to. This did a video for the boss Francis Coppola talking about my cousin-in-law, T.J. Graham. I'm going to talk about my uncle, Henry Lee Marshall Jr. for the next two minutes. Now, Uncle Jr. was like the town drunk, but he was still some younger guy. I remember one time, because the police used to always bring him home. I remember one time being suspended from school and running outside because I hear commotion. Uncle Junior is less than 10 feet from the front door, drunker than shit, barely standing up, telling the cops, man, I'm just sitting here under a little tree in the front yard. This is not your yard, sir. Your yard is over there, sir. Da, 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 da. He says, I know the neighbors here. I live right here. I'm not bothering nobody. I'm just sitting there having my drink. I just need to go out and have some pee. And they stood him up and beat the shit out of him. Didn't take him to jail. They stood this man up in front of his house, in front of all of his old family members and everybody in the neighborhood. And he's like, let me go in the house and pee. And remember, it's the town drunk. Get drunk and saying, Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got some pretty little women. And I'm going to get me one. And they beat that man for like 40 fucking minutes. A drunk. Beat him. Beat him up in front of his house. Laughing and joking. And son him in the house lumped up. Instead of walking the fucking drunk in the house. They had to beat on him. Before they brought him in the house. As to teach the drunk a lesson. You wake up with your eye busted. Because we busted the other one last week. And if we don't bust them, you're just going to fall down and bust them yourself. I grew up watching people beat my people, mistreat my people, mistreat my people. Um, there was a teacher in the school that I went to, and he was having sex with one of the young black girls in the neighborhood. And um, it was something everybody in the neighborhood knew. And nowadays, you see these women fucking all these little boys and shit, nobody cares. Um, life itself is bleak. Young people see foul shit, and it stains them. I have been stained by everything around me. And everything I can blame, I can blame on the world around me. Until then, you've been too 